Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations, much love and respect to you, Akim, out there pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. Now, I wanted to do this lesson on the word uh, perfect, you know, and what it means to be perfect in the scripture, you know, because. You know, growing up in this Western society, you have the mindset that perfect means that you're not going to have any faults. You're not going to do anything wrong. That's not what it means in the scriptures. OK. That you never sin. Therefore, you're perfect. That's not what it means. OK. Now, when you look up the word perfect, it says uh, through this is the etymology. Now. It says through completely. Okay, do, all right, or completely do, completely finish, completed. Okay, so something that is perfect is something that is completed, you know. So when when Paul came and he said he, he finished his course, well, that means that he was perfect. He walked perfectly with Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. That didn't mean he didn't sin because he had great sins, but he also had a great walk to complete, right? Great things he had to do to uh, have those sins remitted or erased, disregarded. He had many things he had to do, you know, even Yahweh said he, there's, there's great things he would have to suffer for my name's sake. So once he did that, you know, he was made what he was, he's become uh, he, he's looked at as being perfect. Matter of fact, <clears throat> let's get Matthew's five real quick. But I was I wanted to get something else before I get that. You know what? I'll start with Matthew's 5. Let's start with Matthew's 5. This is Matthew's 5 and 48. It says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Okay, so the Lord is not going to tell you to do something that you're not able to do. Okay? Now, let's, let's go to the word perfect, which is teleos. In the Greek, it's teleos. And it says... Uh, perfect man uh, of full age brought to its end finished okay because we have to be a finished product before Yahweh shy by the time he comes back right but we can only do that if we complete our mission you know wanting nothing necessary to completeness perfect that which is perfect okay consummate a human integrity and virtue uh, of men, full grown adult of a full age, mature, right? You could say someone that's of a full age have reached the perfection of, you know, of age, you know, but ultimately, right? Perfect means complete, like the moon. It speaks about the, the, the moon uh, decreases in her perfection. Her perfection is when she is the full moon, okay? And then it, and then she decreases, okay? It goes through those those moon cycles of, of, of waxing and then waning. So as we're in this walk, what we're doing is we're, we're, um, we're waxing, okay, up until we become that perfect uh, that perfect light basically well the, the scriptures speak about uh okay hold on shining <clears throat> uh, right this is proverbs 4 and verse start at verse uh 18 it says but the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day, right? Just like the, the moon, it shines, it it um it increases, right? Which means it waxes brighter and brighter up until the point when it's perfect. 
Okay, and that's what we're doing. <laughs> it's locking. And that's what we're doing. We're shining up into the point where we become perfect. Okay? And that doesn't mean that we're without fault. That means we're completing, uh, you know, our, our measure, you know, because every brother has a different measure. And when we're actually going to be changed, that's when we'll be without fault. That's when we'll be without blemish, when we're actually changed, okay, into those new bodies. Let's get that in Corinthians. <clears throat> this is first Corinthians 15 and verse 50 it says now this I say brethren that flesh and blood could not inherit the kingdom of the most high neither doth corruption inherit incorruption and this flesh is corruptible right the scriptures say that th th this creature was subject to vanity and that includes all of us man we're subject to vanity the only one that came on the earth and did not sin was Yahweh Shai. Okay, but that didn't make the other men of the Lord not perfect because you have to understand what, what perfection means, what it actually means, not what Esau, uh, Esau's new speak has you believe it to mean, meaning that it never had any flaws, any any blemishes, it never, you know, it never went through a process. No. Okay, there, there's definitely a process. All right. Um, hold on, let me slow on. Here it says, uh, and even in the process, you can be perfect. Okay, let me let me uh, read that again. It says, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. All right, because we're not going in with this flesh. Okay, we're changing. We're getting a change. It says, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, meaning we're not all going to die. But we shall be. We shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Now, that's when we're going to be without blemish. You know, there's not going to be a such thing as a, an ugly Israelite or an Israelite that's weak or got a bad leg or a bad toe or that sins. All of our people will be without blemish for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality okay yeah we're gonna be immortals on the earth you see now let's get this let's get james 3 and verse and i'll start at verse 2 it says for it in many things we offend all if any man offend not in word the same is a perfect man. If he offend what? Not in word. What does it say about the elect? That the elect will be found without guile in their mouth. You see, the Lord is not judging us based upon how the law says that we're supposed to be judged. Because if he did, then we would be dead. But there's certain people that will be judged like that because what are they doing? They're pushing forth the law. The scriptures say, uh, judge not lest ye be judged for with the same measure ye judge, ye shall be judged. So if you're judging based upon people keeping the law 100% and, and this and that, and you boasting in the law, well, the Lord will judge you based upon the law. And we'll see how, how it ends up for you, man, with your lineup. Okay? Let me read this again. It says, for in many things we offend. We offend all. If any man offend in word, offend not in word, excuse me, the same is a perfect man. It didn't say that he didn't sin. Okay, it didn't say that he, he didn't offend indeed at, at some times. He, he even offend, might have offended his brother at certain times. But that did not make him a, a, not a perfect man because the Lord is looking at the spirit. What's in the heart is going to come out in the words, man. It says, and able also to bridle the whole body. Because when you deal with words, right, idle words, the scriptures speak about every idle word which man shall speak. You look up that word idle, it means without a... Uh, effort you know without effort without work without labor because you didn't labor to filter that those words through your mind through your spirit you just let it out and it really revealed what you truly who you truly are okay um 
Um, let's get James 1. Okay, this is James 1. In verse, uh, verse 2, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. All right? Which means different tests. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire. See, that's what the word perfect means. It means to be entire, wanting nothing. Okay? mean, nothing is missing. All right? See, but it's through it's through uh, this this uh, through um, patience, right? That that the that the work will be complete, you know. Because if you don't, and what's what's what counts as the work being complete? Well, let's get um, Revelations two, right? It doesn't mean you did everything perfect. It doesn't mean you always did things perfect. No, it means what? This is um. This is Revelations 2 and 25. But that which ye have already, which is the truth, hold fast till I come. Okay? You see that? And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. So it has to do with the holding the truth and doing the works. Whatever your your your, your lot is, filling, fulfilling your port, your lot, fulfilling your, your measure in this truth. Doing what you're supposed to be doing until the end. And that includes loving your brother as yourself. That includes uh, 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 um, being sincere. Okay? Helping the ministry. Okay? It says, to him will I give power over the nations. You see, that means what? He fulfilled his, his portion. He, 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 uh, he was complete. The mission was complete, ultimately. And as the mission was complete, he became complete. It says, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter. Shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Now, when you look at what the Lord said about jo uh, uh, Noah, right? It said, this is Genesis 6. In verse 9, it says, a matter of fact, I'll start at verse 8. It says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of Yahweh. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with the Most High. You see that? So he called Noah perfect. Did that mean, did Noah not never sin? Of course he sinned. Okay, he's a man. All right, he was in the flesh. Okay, we were subject to vanity. Okay. But he was still regarded as what? A perfect man. Okay, this word might be a little bit different now, but I think this perfect is Thamayim, <coughs> which is perfect in the Hebrew. We got a brother in uh, the Toronto camp named Thamayim as well. Yeah, this is Thamayim. Okay, Thamaya means actually means perfect. It's complete, whole, entire, sound. Complete, whole, entire, whole, sound, healthful, complete. Okay. And when you're sincere, what does the word sincere mean? It means pure. Right? It says here sincerely. Sincerely means pure. You have to be sincere about this thing. You know. You know, um, so Khan, you have that, but then what you have when it speaks about King Solomon not being perfect with the Lord, this is a different word. That word is not really supposed to be perfect. When you go here in the Hebrew, it says, um, I'll read it, it says, and he walked in all the sins of his father. Well, this is dealing with, um, his son, but it says the same thing for King Solomon. Um, it says the same thing. So I'll just show you what it says. It says, and he walked in all the sins of his, uh, of his father, which he had done before him. And his heart was not perfect with Yahweh, his power, as the heart of David, his father. So now when you look up this word perfect, it says shalom, shalom, all right, which means peace. So what it's trying to say is that 
or what it should have said is that his uh, his heart was not with peace. Okay, with the Most High, was not at peace with the Most High, without at peace with Yahweh, His power. That's what it's supposed to say, man. Why is it not at peace? Because the carnal mind is enmity against the Most High, man. And when you're going against the agenda, serving other gods, you're causing people to serve the other, other gods, you're going against his law, statutes, and his commandments, then guess what? You're, you're warring against Yahweh by Shem Shai. Or if you're warring against his men, your heart is not at peace with Yahweh by Shem Shai. Okay? So, this word is different. Okay, that word is different for perfect. But I just want to touch on that, man. That the, 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 the thing of being perfect is not what you what the world makes you to think it means. Matter of fact, let me read this real quick. It says, um, let me end it off on this. It says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that ye present your bodies as a, li a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto the Most High, which is our reasonable service, you know, our lot, our measure. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the most high. Okay. You see that? So we got We got to find a complete, you know, will of the most high, which we found, you know, to, we know what to do. Okay. But now we have to. Uh, walk in perfection with Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, as he told Abraham, be uh, be, be perfect, you know, walk perfectly before me, you know, because we that's what we have to do. And when the time when we know that we've walked perfectly is when we finish it, okay? We have to finish this. We have to shine brighter and brighter into that perfect day, okay? Without guile in our mouth, without turning back, you know? So with that, um... Lord willing, this was edifying to the elect. Give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Shem Yahweh, Shem Kakwadah, Shalom.